Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we got to talk about how scared money don't make money. That's right. You guys have heard the saying before, scared money don't make no money. Well, in this video, I got this book where I made some money by putting myself in a scary situation, but I'm very, very happy that I did it because I have this amazing book to show you guys here today. And then later on in the video, I want to talk a little bit about this idea of, you know, scared money don't make money because I've been thinking about how I picked up this particular book right here and thinking about some other books out there in the market and the overall sentiment sort of around those books, thinking that they're done or that they're going to have, you know, not no longer going to go up in value uh, and how you have to sort of get over those kind of fears because if you believe in these certain books, you know, you're definitely going to be able to make equity later on down the line. But before I get into the video and show off the book, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, doing those things, I would appreciate it. But let's get into this video here today. All right, well, I have this book I want to show you guys, but I have to sort of set the stage a little bit first. Uh, basically, I was on eBay doing my thing, you know, just perusing, seeing what keys are out there being sold under FMV because everything on eBay right now is is absolutely, you know, steals, especially the live auctions. I mean, I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but like maybe a lot of people who are buying comics right now are on other platforms, you know, maybe they're on my slabs or they're on Instagram, you know, shout out to Grail's Instagram. Uh, but I feel like a lot of the live auctions have been, you know, going a little bit under the radar. And I happen to notice this particular book uh, go up at auction and actually nobody bid on it because they had, you know, a certain price level set for it. I think they had it at like $1,300 or something and, and nobody uh, took took the bite. So they relisted the item and they actually lowered the price down to like, you know, 1100 or something. And I went into their store and realized that this person was local to LA. And I did the thing that, you know, you're totally allowed to do where I saw the person's name on their store. And I also found them on Instagram and I asked him if they would do, you know, local pickup for this particular book because they were located in Los Angeles. Uh, they said that they were, and uh, we were able to set up this local pickup for this particular book. So uh, I ended up going out to meet them in downtown LA. And this is where the, you know, scared money don't make money part really brings it home. Because uh, if you guys have ever been to downtown LA, I mean, I love downtown LA. I've lived there for many, many years in my, you know, mid to late 20s. But there's uh, some parts of it that are, you know, uh, a little bit sketchy. Let's just put it at that right now. Uh, and we ended up meeting at this corner store that uh, was, you know, definitely the type of place that you would not want to be at, you know, late at night by yourself. Uh, but there I was, you know, cash in hand, hoping that this was going to be a real thing that I could do this local pickup uh, for this particular book. And lo and behold, the guy showed up. He was a super cool guy, super nice. And this was just something where he, you know, he was just looking to get a sale and he was happy to meet me. And I got an incredible deal on this amazing book right here. Amazing Spider-Man, number three. First appearance of Dr. Octopus in a 1.5 grade, which I'm totally fine with because this was a book that, you know, was on my, like, this would be cool to own list, but it wasn't really something I was targeting. But when I saw this one go up for $1,100 and I was able to locally pick it up for 1000 I thought that that was a really, really great deal. One of the best, if not the best, you know, amazing Spider-Man covers. I absolutely love this one. Uh, happy to get it in 1.5. I think, you know, just getting in the neighborhood with this is a great book to have. And this is one of those situations where, you know, sometimes the lower grades like this, like the ones, the 1.5s, 2.0s, as long as the damage is, you know, on the edges or the back, it's not that big a deal to me. I mean, you can see right there, uh, got a, the staple, uh, you know, detached right here, a lot of spine wear, you know, some splits and stuff like that. And then on the back right here, it's got this missing piece with uh, the tape right here. And that's really what brings it down to the 1.5. But when we're talking about, you know, the title, the characters, the colors, all that stuff, uh, the book definitely looked great to me and I'm super happy to add it. So that was my little story about putting myself in a scary situation. Uh, but because I did that, I actually made a lot of money or, you know, equity money, so to speak, with this particular book. And that's really the, the idea that I want to kind of transition to in the next part of this video. Talking about some of these books that I feel people are fearful about. You know, I have a lot of conversations with people who talk about books being done and feeling like, you know, they're never going to go back up in value. And, you know, look, nobody can predict the future. We don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, if you do believe in this medium, at least in the short term, right, in the next three to five years, you feel like 
whatever, the MCU is going to turn it around. You feel like eventually people are going to notice that these books are undervalued. Uh, there's a lot of books out there that, you know, the market has fear towards right now, but are really good deals when you think about them. So, you know, I kind of wanted to show you guys just a couple books for me that came to mind and sort of, you know, in thinking about this scared money, don't make money uh, situation here. This, of course, was Amazing Spider-Man 3, the book that I picked up. I just kind of wanted to show you guys that, you know, with my local pickup, I was able to uh, not have to pay this 30-day moving average at $1,850, $1,900, which was absolutely crazy. But, you know, the book that really comes to mind that I wanted to talk about starts with this one right here, which is Tales of Suspense number 52, First Appearance of Black Widow, a book that I feel like has dropped off way more than it should. Uh, and I want to show you guys uh, certain grades that this is really evidence. You know, so I pulled up the 4.0 here and 4.0 is really good to look at because this is one of those books where the 4.0 is going to have a larger sample size. Uh, but you can just see, just taking a look at this graph, the last couple sales for this one were way under market. I mean, the last sale uh, specifically was $540. And based on that price, I mean, we're talking about, you know, uh, effectively 2019 prices for this particular book. And that's what this book is selling at today. And, you know, to me, I, I think, you know, a lot of people look at this book and think to themselves, oh, Black Widow as a character, Scarlett Johansson, she's done. Uh, nobody cares about this book anymore. Uh, I have fear if I make a purchase on this thing. I mean, you can see across all the grades, there's red everywhere. And this is the type of thing that I feel like as, you know, collectors, or if you're thinking about, you know, finding equity on books or investing in certain books, these are the type of books you want to look at. These are the type of books you want to buy. You want to buy these characters, you know, now, so to speak. I mean, yes, there's some fear that maybe there's not going to be some kind of, you know, pop cultural event that's going to bring up the value of this book in the future. And that might be the case for a little bit of time. But when we just think about the character itself and what they represent, I mean, I'm not going to say that Black Widow is going to be as valuable as Spider-Man eventually. But if we're looking at a book like that and looking at that price range and then comparing it to, you know, other characters that are out there where, you know, the first appearance of Black Knight is currently selling for higher than that of Black Widow, that's totally crazy to me because, you know, w when it's all said and done, I still feel like, you know, even if Kit Harrington does a great job with a Black Knight character, the Black Widow character in the, you know, annals of time in the history of Marvel comic books will likely always be more important and more esteemed than the Black Knight character. And then when we, you know, get to Secret Wars and we redo, you know, everything and we bring, uh, you know, uh, Scarlett Johansson back or, or even, you know, some other actors to play the Natasha Romanoff version of the Black Widow character, uh, that book will see, you know, the sun once again. And so, you know, these are the, these things that I always think about where it's like the scared money doesn't make money. You have to be willing to go where other people are fearful to go. And that's really one of the reasons why I had been looking for the Doc Ock book because, you know, it's very likely that we're not going to see Doc Ock you know, represented uh, at least in a live action capacity in some way uh, against Spider-Man in a very, very long time. I mean, there's so many other villains that they're going to have to go through before we actually get, you know, another version of Dr. Octopus. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm okay to wait because I'm willing to, you know, buy this book now thinking that in the long term, it's going to have its relevance once again. And also, you know, obviously ASM3, it's always going to be valuable. But let's take a look at some of the other books that I think are interesting. Uh, just to kind of nail this point home, uh, another book I think about a lot about is Amazing Spider-Man 13. This is the perfect example of a character or a book that, you know, effectively is done. And not a lot of people are targeting this thing. I mean, granted, there's always going to be a subset of people that are looking for ASM keys. I mean, ASM keys are always going to be desired in the market. Uh, but this is one of those instances where, you know, we have a character, Quentin Beck, who, you know, was effectively used in the last uh, Spider-Man movie or the one before that. And we're kind of now on this down trend with it where, you know, this is a book that didn't quite have the early 2021 spike, uh, but it did have kind of the midsummer spike. And then in the lead up to Amazing Spider-Man number three, a lot of people were thinking, oh, maybe Mysterio will be a part of that Sinister Six team. And he wasn't there. And now we're sort of on this decline for this book. But where it's currently selling is still within the trend line, so to speak, which now becomes that sort of test of wills where you have to think to yourself, this book is sort of on the decline, yet it is still selling within the trend line of uh, Swagglehoss's Silver Age Index, you know, is now still a good time to buy this thing? Well, nobody can really know. But again, it's that sort of fear right now that people are thinking that this book is done. But if you were able to get something at a good deal right now, I feel like you, you, this is that moment where you're going to be able to have so much equity later on down the line when the market looks back towards ASM 13. Another book that I think, you know, 
know this is very, very true of is Tales of Suspense 50. Uh, obviously a book that had a massive spike up when the Mandarin was in Shang-Chi uh, and is basically, you know, you can't give this book away right now. I mean, there's so many copies that are going for steals. Uh, and it's not to say that this book is should be, you know, uh, five times more valuable, but it definitely seems like where this book currently sits, there's a lot of opportunity to gain, you know, instant equity, especially if the character ever comes back. And I'm sure at some point in the future, even outside of the MCU, we're going to have, you know, Mandarin stories uh, eventually. And then the last book I kind of wanted to just highlight is this one right here, Avengers number four. You know, when we got Chris Evans in the MCU, uh, this book obviously was, you know, a more top of mind. I'm sure we're going to get Chris Evans, Captain America again. But when I think about this one, you know, this was one of the books that was slower to have that 2021 spike up like a lot of the other keys did, uh, similar to uh, some of the Iron Man keys. I mean, Tales of Suspense 39 is now starting to get, you know, a lot of heat out there in the market. But, you know, in the April and May of 2021, uh, that book was definitely lagging behind as well as this one right here. And I think it's because a lot of people were thinking, you know, Captain America and Iron Man are done. And not, not a lot of people were willing to sort of invest their money into that. And when I look at characters like this, who, you know, are not necessarily like spec characters anymore, and people are thinking, oh, that, you know, these books are done. Uh, I'm, I, I wouldn't want to put my money in that because, you know, it's likely not going to go up. Those are the types of situations I think you can do really well in. And if you can get over that fear, so to speak, uh, you can definitely gain a lot of equity overall. And I feel like maybe the comic book market is actually starting to do this more. You know, we're not so concerned with like, oh, just because this character is showing up in this movie, uh, who cares? You know, the MCU is definitely a factor into driving up the demand for certain key books. Uh, but, you know, you got to still evaluate characters in terms of historical popularity. Uh, the ones, the keys that have always been desired are always going to continue to be desired once the MCU is gone, at least amongst comic book collectors. But that's all I have for this video. That was why I picked up ASM number three, First Appearance of Doc Ock, an all-time classic book, in my opinion. Uh, a character who probably we're not going to see in a movie at least for five, eight, 10 years, right? Like, I mean, it's going to it's gonna be a while before we see a live action version of this character once again, but it doesn't matter because this is an all-time great book, an all-time great character, and I'm super happy to add it to my collection. Anyway, so that's all I have for this video. That was me showing off my new book. Let me know what you guys think. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next one.